Before this video begins, I'd like to say that we are getting very close to 500 subscribers and as a result we will be doing a Q&A where you get to know us a little bit better and also so we get to learn things from the viewers. If you have questions, leave them in the comment section along with hashtag Q&A. Okay, I'll admit it, I was fully expecting the 32 core 64 thread Naples CPU in the future, but I was seriously not expecting anything between that and Ryzen 7. That is, until now. Ryzen 9 news has been flooding all over the tech news recently, so here is a quick and simple breakdown of the Threadripper lineup from AMD. Much like all the other Ryzen CPUs, it is based on the AM4 socket, and I have to say, there are quite a number of them. Nine, to be exact. First of all, I'll be going through all of them one by one, talking about their specifications and hierarchy within the family. The smaller of the family is the Ryzen 9 1955, with 10 cores, 20 threads, a base clock of 3.1 GHz, and a boost of 3.7 GHz, and a TDP of only 125 watts. If you were to cash in on the 1955X, you would be getting the same core count, thread count, and TDP, but a base clock of 3.6 GHz and a boost of 4. And of course, like the rest of the Ryzen CPUs, the X in the name indicates the presence of XFR, or extended frequency range, by which the CPU will dynamically overclock a bit further, depending on the cooling you have. These two will presumably compete fairly closely with the i7-6950X in performance, judging by the IPC and RAW specifications alone. Above these two, we have a slight jump in core and thread count with the Ryzen 9 1956. With 12 cores and 24 threads, the base clock is lower than the 1955 at 3GHz, but still has a hefty jump in boost clock to 3.7GHz, and has the same TDP of 125 watts. The 1956 of course adds XFR, an extra 200MHz on the base, and 100MHz on the boost clock. Nothing much. The 1976X has a jump again on cores and threads to 14 and 28, with a 3.6 base and 4.1 boost, this time with an increased TDP of 140 watts. This is the only CPU in the Ryzen 9 line that does not have a non-XFR counterpart. But interestingly, the 1977 has the same core and thread count, TDP and IPC, but with a lower clock speed, so this in theory means that the 1977 is overall weaker than the 1976X, despite the higher number in the name. This might become slightly confusing, but you would assume somebody dropping this much money on the CPU would do their research first. The X variant of this CPU has a slightly elevated clock speed of 300MHz on both the base and the boost clocks, and a jump of TDP from 140 to 155 watts. So now, it is the ones that pretty much everybody has been talking about in the tech news lately, and they certainly have reason to. These are the 1998 and the 1998X. So let's start off with the 1998, which has 16 cores and 32 threads, a base of 3.2 GHz and a boost of 3.5, and a TDP of 155 watts while the XFR counterpart has a base of 3.5 and a boost of 3.9. As you would most likely derive, these CPUs are not for gaming. Yes, they will be able to run games at pretty good frame rates, but they would simply not be able to utilise all of the cores. Not for a long time anyway. If you are a purely a gamer looking for the perfect gaming system, Threadripper is not the place to look. Your money would be best spent on a Ryzen 5 1600X on AMD's end, and investing more money into one or two beastly GPUs will really make an impact in games. Even in the case of 99% of YouTube content creators, these CPUs, although they may improve render times, would have little benefit over Ryzen 7. The Ryzen 9 CPUs will still have a purpose, 
and that is extreme multitasking. If you are someone who needs to render multiple videos as quickly as you possibly can, running several resource intensive applications at once, then this may be for you, or else you may just be throwing your money in the bin. Now the question is how much will these cost in the end? The Ryzen 7 1800X sells for about 500 US dollars, which is roughly half of that of the 6900K. It is pretty much a toe-to-toe -to -toe competitor. Now I assume that the 1955 will be roughly as powerful as the 6950X, so using that idea, the CPU could cost about half than the Intel competitor, so let's say about $850 for the 1955. It is, although a pretty generous estimation, very possible, and it will likely be slightly more but what do you think? Leave your ideas in the comment sections down below. Intel do have an interesting CPU line on the rise, which is Skylake X, which is to feature the first ever Intel Core i9 CPUs. All we know that the most powerful will pack 12 cores and 24 threads, and that is the i9-7920X. Aside from that, the remainder of the specifications for the most part remain a mystery, and thus it will be hard to know where it will actually sit in comparison to Ryzen. My estimation is that it will sit between the 1956X and the 1976X, due to the relatively faster IPC than Ryzen, but lower core count than the 1976X. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, be sure to leave a like and maybe even subscribe for more. But anyway guys, thank you for watching, and I'll hopefully see you in the next video.